Dean Dark is an absurd, over-the-top comedy horror adventure intended for older audiences. Content warnings can be found in the episode descriptions. Hello and welcome to Dean Dark, a Dungeons & Dragons-inspired real-play podcast starring some of history's most infamous monsters. I'm Danger Dan Jers, and I will be your host slash Crypt Keeper. Now, the way this is going to work, basically, myself and the players will be working together to tell a long-form improvised story. The players can essentially do whatever they want within reason, and their success or failure is determined by dice rolls, typically with a 20-sided dice known as a D20. It is my job as the host and game master to interpret what those dice rolls mean and shape the story around them accordingly. The players are all working off of a character sheet with stats that are specific to them, so certain skills that they're particularly good or bad at will have modifiers that they add to or subtract from the result of their dice rolls. Last thing, on a 20-sided dice, an unmodified or natural roll of 1 or 20 is always a significant event, since that represents the worst or best possible outcomes accordingly. Without further ado, let's introduce our players. Hello, my name is Daniel Cruz, and I will be playing Imhotep, the mummy. I'm playing as a death domain cleric, and my character has been risen after 4,000 years of slumber, being tasked to find certain scrolls of power that have been stolen from his tomb. Hi, I'm Janae. I am playing Carmilla Karnstein, the vampire spawn blood hunter. He comes from a land far, far away for a mysterious business owned only to her, and eventually through her teammates. My name is Jordan. I am playing the Wolfman, also known as Larry Talbot. He is a lycanthropic warlock who, just one day, walking in the woods, happened to bumble into what became the unfortunate, unexpected rest of his life. Hello, I am Aaron. I'm going to be playing the Phantom of the Opera, a bard who was flung from France and who now seeks beauty wherever he can find it, especially in the macabre. My name is Ben Magnet, and I play Frankenstein's monster, a barbarian flesh golem who is constantly wandering the land trying to make sure the creations of his father never happen again. I am Grayson. I'll be playing Jack Griffin, the invisible man who's uh, in the class of a rogue. After failing to find a cure for his condition, this scientist turned to thievery and found a lot of success in his new line of work. <laughs> All right, let's go pretend that we're uh, spooky skeletons and shit. So, there is an English country landscape. If this were a movie, text would be crawling over the screen, and like Mega Man X, it would be 18XX to keep it vague and wonderful. Um, it's probably going to be in the latter uh, 30 years of that. I'm just going to say 1880X. All of that text happens, as I said it, and then disappears under the light of a half moon that hangs mm. ominously over the sky. This is an English countryside, but it's, air quotes, England. Um, it's mm -hmm. England as imagined up by someone who's never been there and who didn't want to do any research beyond what city name sounded fun and what was within a reasonable distance from each other. This particular version of England is also a version that is host to the supernatural, the paranormal, the strange, and the dark. And the spooky. We open up in the spooky hamlet of Fairstead in a rundown church whose walls hold a storied past but have seen better days. And lying just beyond this chapel is a cemetery that is heavily shrouded in fog. There are several paths approaching this cemetery coming from all directions. And coming from the east, there is a small, disheveled figure that is looking nervously at the moon overhead, double, triple, and quadruple checking that, yes, it is only a half moon as Larry Talbot enters into the scene. Larry, describe how you enter into this setting and what you do next. 
Larry enters the scene, nervously shaking, clutching his silver wolf-capped cane, and he thinks to himself, well, uh, this seems like the right place. And he, he sets his cane down to the side on a rock or a shrub, and he gets out his cards and he starts shuffling through them. And he flips over a card, and he's like, oh, well, that's, that's bad. And he sees in his hand the card of death. Ooh. But it is death reversed. But he doesn't know any better. He just sees a card that says death on it. And he's like, that's bad. This is going to be a bad night. I, I'm, I'm sure there's some reason why that is good. Uh, Malavia always makes up some garbage about, yo, oh, it's, it's great. You know, when it's upside down, it means something great. It's not about death. It's like symbolic. It's fine. It's fine. Roll insight for me. Sure. With a four, um, no, as you are remembering. No, no. I said sure. <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought you said four. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then now it's a one. I know. Oh god. Uh, it's it's a sixteen. But let me find my insight. <laughs> my insight is plus four, so that's an unnatural twenty. With an unnatural twenty, you sift through the distracting thoughts that keep intruding in on you, and you remember the conversation that you had before you headed off in this direction, mm -hmm. where Maleva told you, it is time for you to redeem yourself, Lawrence. I need you to listen to me. I need time. you to listen to me, Lawrence. Time. You put me on a bunch of wonderful errands, uh, but what do I have to do this time? All right, so this is very, very important. Okay. Um, it seems as though, uh, let me just tell you what the card showed me. Okay. I saw, and this is how I knew it was you, and how I knew it was going to be important. I drew the moon. I drew the moon <gasps> card. Damn it. Are you listening to me? Um, I need you to be able to pick up on all of this tarot business. Your life may depend on oh, it. Oh, God. Should I get out my notebook? <sighs> Don't bother. You're not going to remember this anyway. Damn it. Um, <laughs> you drew the moon. You drew the moon. I drew the high empress. I drew the hanged man reversed. Empress I drew hangman? the hermit. Hermit? I drew death reversed. Well, and all of those I drew while looking at the map of the English countryside. And all of the cards fell in order in a pentagram shape over this cemetery, this chapel of St. Mary's in Fairstead. I need you to go there. I need you to investigate. I need you to join up. Something catastrophic is going to happen. Uh, and I need you to not fuck it up. Uh... If, if I might, uh, so, uh, death card, graveyard, pentagram. Yes, death card, graveyard, work hard, go. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of bullshit, but whatever, Malavia, I'll go. You're the one who's a lot of bullshit. You're a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> it's, it's not my fault. Anyway. And the memory clouds of flashback, um... <laughs> fade away and you are back in this cemetery. Uh-huh. And I'm like, okay, okay. So I drew the card. I drew the, one of the same cards she had. The the death reverse. Okay. So, Empress, Hangman, but upside down, looking like a balloon, um, Hermit, and Moon. She said the moon was supposed to be me. I wonder, I wonder if this is who I'm supposed to meet here? Or all those people? Why don't you uh, make a perception roll? Okay. He's like, I, I hate to think who this death card's supposed to be. Not too excited to find out who that is. All right, so perception, I rolled a 12 plus 2. That's a 14. With a 14, you stop muttering to yourself for a moment, and you continue to hear at roughly the same volume as your own muttering to yourself some disparate voices coming from further within the cemetery. You can also see a little bit of commotion through the windows of the chapel itself. You can't tell anything more from either of those. You don't know necessarily how big a presence there is in either of those two directions, but you do know that something's going on both up in the chapel and down in the graveyard. So he doesn't get a sense of what seems more threatening. They seem like equal amounts of threat. As far as you can tell, yes. Ah, oh, damn. So he's like, oh, crap. All right. I'm supposed to meet someone here. Um, and you said it was muttering from inside the cemetery? 
Uh, you saw some movement through the windows of the chapel, and you heard some muttered, disembodied voices from the cemetery. All right. Well, if if someone's in the building, I'm, and they notice me, I might have an easier chance of escaping than encountering someone already outside. So I guess I'll, I'll go closer to the chapel. As you approach the chapel, go ahead and make an investigation roll. <laughs> this is looking good. Diddly, dee, 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 dee. Three. With uh-huh. a flat three, um, you have no clue <laughs> what's going on inside this building. You're going to have to actively go inside the building to learn more from here. Correct. <laughs> okay. I will scared Luigi Mansion, shaky hand, reach for the doorknob or whatever <laughs> is on this door here. To try and take a quick little peek inside. Okay, go ahead and roll sleight of hand. See how slight my shaky little hand is? 18. Okay, with an 18, you're able to open the door. It lets out a light creak, but does not seem to be loud enough to draw any undue attention to yourself. And as you peek inside this chapel, you see that this is a very old, rundown, and dilapidated building. It is in pretty bad shape. Um, there's not a whole lot of light source in here, so you can't see specifically what it was that you were seeing through the windows. But as you look around, you see a little bit of rubble. There's some support pillars that have been worn down over the years that are hanging on, but are not doing too great. You do see a lot of overturned pews that have been long neglected. It looks like nobody's been in this chapel for a long time, except at the very back, you see some slight movement from the shadows. And Phantom of the Opera, tell us a little bit about how you find yourself here in this situation. For now, as I'm traveling alone, looking for meaningful pieces of art or ways to express beauty or to collect and preserve beauty since I've seen so much of it destroyed. I'm here looking through this church to rescue hymns, beautiful pieces of music that uh, hopefully will have been written down and kept here. Okay, why don't you make an investigation roll to look for specific music pieces? All right, so I've rolled a two. It's not looking good. Let me see (laughs) if I have anything to... uh help with that at all plus four but it's <laughs> it's still not very high that's six with a six you do find where the hymn books were stored they are all waterlogged and they are pretty much unsalvageable you can um. still see some of the songs that they once were but all of the music is kind of faded away and the ink is smeared the pages are collapsing in your hand You do see, however, just kind of where they're located. There's a few other books that are in a little bit better shape. And you do manage to see um, off in the corner of this chapel. The only way you wouldn't have seen this is with a one. uh, Big ass pipe organ. It is uh, in pretty bad disarray and disrepair. But it looks like it might still be able to function somewhat. What a marvelous piece. (laughs) <laughs> I would like to go to it and play uh, Box Fugue. All right, roll me just a straight D20. 13. How fitting. With a 13, you lay down the first couple of notes. About half the keys seem to not be working, but some discordant notes emerge from the pipe organ, and you're able to restrain yourself quickly enough as you realize that all of the volume control pedals on this organ are destroyed and you have no way of moderating the volume, and it is stuck at its maximum setting. (laughs) Roll stealth first, and then perception. Oh my god. So nat one. First nat one, first nat one! Yay! Uh, But then for the perception, a 14. Okay, so with a one for stealth, (laughs) and a 14 for perception... You look around to make sure that nobody heard you, and you see that the door is cracked open and that there is a skittish-looking figure that is staring directly at you and who has seen and heard your shape and your music. Dear God! Well, come in from there. Give your slates. Give give my what now? 
Your name, your profession. Who are you? Why uh, are you here? Uh, I, I, my, 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 my name is uh, Lawrence, and I was asked to meet some people out here. What kind of people? Uh, and I, I futz back through my notes, and I'm like, uh, 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 uh hanged man, um, a uh, hermit, uh, something, something about an empress? I don't, does that ring a bell at all? No. Cool. <laughs> all right, then, I, I don't know. Sorry, the person that sent me out here likes to give yeah. as little information to me as possible. Uh, I, I'm sorry for disturbing you. I can, I can make my way out of here. Are those cards? Tarot cards? Is that what those are? Uh, 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 yes. Uh, uh, would you like to look at them? Please, might I? Sure. I, and I, I bring specifically the ones that Maleva gave to me. I like hand over to him to look at. Uh, Phantom, make an investigation roll. Oh my god, it's another one. Oh no! Oh no! And they burst into flame. No! <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, guys, I guess mm -hmm. I'm going home. <laughs> wow, this one must be the Joker. <laughs> yeah. So, um... They're just playing cards. With a nat one, <laughs> these just look like normal-ass cards to you. They look completely mundane, ordinary, and disgustingly unnoteworthy. How paltry, how hideous, how banal. Take them back. Oh, uh, I toss I toss them rudely. <laughs> I can't catch them and they fall onto the floor. <laughs> just kind of pat my hands around to try and scoop them up. As you look around on the floor to scoop up those cards, we cut back to the graveyard and coming in from the west in the opposite direction as the wolfman entered in comes a skeletal figure marching in step with two other skeletal figures that are dead set and determined, locked onto a trajectory leading to this cemetery. Imhotep, tell us a little bit about what you and your men are doing here. 4,000 years ago, I was mummified alive for blasphemies against both my king and the gods. And upon my tomb being rediscovered, I was reawakened and tasked with finding the scrolls of power that I was entombed with that have since been taken. And one of these scrolls, I believe, is to be here. Uh, you would be correct about that, uh, Lord Imhotep. Thank you for, uh, for reiterating that. We, that is our purpose, <laughs> to be here, is to find that scroll. Um, and from everything that our mystical senses are telling us, it appears that um, the scroll of Anubis is in the center of this cemetery. The power of death itself. Powerful. We must find this scroll while we are here. So, uh, what do you propose we do about it, Lord Imhotep? Do you think that an investigation check would be the appropriate one to see? Or perhaps an arcana, for I am looking for a magic scroll. Uh, go ahead and roll arcana. Ah, an arcana check. <laughs> that would be a six. It is very dark here. <laughs> Hard to see the magic in the night. I would like to note, it is very dark, despite the fact that my body has runes that glow up to 60 feet. It is still very dark. Oh, poor nightlight. Oh, glow <laughs> stick. It is quite dark here, Lord Imhotep, and um, we do sense some magic here, but we're, uh, there, there's something interfering with our senses, and I, I, don't, I don't know that I can precisely tell from my senses alone what's going on. Would you like for, uh, would you like for me and my companion to search on your behalf, or would you like for us to stay together as a condensed unit? I do not trust the two of you to go alone without getting into some sort of antics. I remember what happened at the brewery on the way here. One of the two skeletons, uh, sulks his head and says, uh, Yes, I'm sorry, Lord Imhotep. I know I got ahead of myself, but we needed to get out of there in a hurry. They identified us as being outsiders. Whatever be your excuse is, we travel together. Understood, Lord Imhotep. We will follow your lead. Imhotep is going to take his little cronies and is going to start to make his way towards the cemetery, the entrance to the gate. So as you make your way to the cemetery entrance... A thick fog billows from out of the steps. There are hedges on either side that are very tall and that are blocking your view from looking directly in other than through that. The gate. So as you make your way up to the gate in sort of a bumbling military fashion, your two skeleton cronies 
size themselves up on either side of the gate, pressing themselves up against the hedges. And doing imagine a, like Kronk. Exactly. They're they're humming their own theme song. Oh god. Go ahead and make a perception roll. That's a five, six. With a six, you hear a small mumbling of voices coming from within the cemetery. And it sounds like they're about to say something that would be narratively useful for you to find out. And then you hear the blast of a pipe organ yeah. from behind you. Yeah. Imhotep kind of has his back to the hedge as well and leans where his ear would be. And then just hears the blast of Takato and Fugue and just like, just kind of like wheels around and looks at the chapel. There should be nobody else here, at least not in there. What do you propose we do, Lord Imhotep? By now you should know the answer is he grabs them by their heads that the two of you investigate. Unk. And both of their heads cock together. They shuffle and stumble away a little bit. Um, they gather their composure and then say, yes, Lord Imhotep. Yes, Lord Imhotep. He is kind of standing there with his arms crossed, uses his thaumaturge to turn his usually blue eyes to that red that they know means he's angry. Can you describe to me the thaumaturgy spell? You manifest a minor wonder or sign of supernatural power within the range of 30 feet. Got it. So you do that, and then your skeletons... They are named Asim and Ur. Okay. So Asim and Ur. Let's say Asim says... All right, no need to be so dramatic, Lord Imhotep. We're on top of this. <laughs> and they make their way into the cathedral. Sorry, not cathedral, chapel. Uh, I'm going to say that Imhotep is going to kind of follow along and just kind of stand outside and just, like, listen in because he doesn't actually trust these two to do the job well. They walk into the cathedral and see Larry on the ground gathering together his assorted uh, tarot cards while the phantom is looking over in annoyance. Both of you go ahead and roll perception. Yeah, I keep, like, picking up a couple cards and then reaching down to grab some more and then dropping the previous cards and then picking up some more cards and dropping the first cards. Um, but I rolled, a, it was a perception? Perception. Uh, unnatural 20. I'm on a roll today. You smelled the bones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, smelled the bones. <laughs> the imaginary tail began to wag. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of like shakes around a little bit. And mine was an 18 as well. Oh, sweet. Okay, so you both immediately turn and notice uh, these two skeletons that see you react to them. They really quickly look to each other and then stand really, really, really still. <laughs> and I just say that Imhotep kind of like leans his head a little bit into the doorway and sees them standing perfectly still while these two stare at them and just starts muttering curses in Coptic under his breath. Um, some cartoonish beads of sweat begin to fall down the heads of these skeletons. How do you sweat? You do not have glands. <laughs> Sweaty bones. You don't know where, you don't know how, you don't know why, but they are sweating bullets. Oh my god, so gross. So are these um, moist skeletons, the people you're here to meet? <laughs> uh, I shakily like raise up like cards jittering in my hand. I'm like, ah... Uh... He could be the death. He's a skeleton, but also, uh, all my cards are all mixed up. The 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 hierophant, the the, the emperor. Um, skeletons. Um, are you looking for a particularly nervous man? Uh, what? There are no skeletons here. Just us statues. For their point of view, they can feel the heat from his red eyes boring into the back of their skulls. Oh my god. As Imhotep takes a moment, composes himself, and uses his Pierce the Veil ability to make himself appear as, as a mortal once more. Okay. So the human looking form of Imhotep walks into this cathedral. Walks into the cathedral in between his skeletons. Chapel, dang it. I the chapel, it. whatever. This cathedral. Walks into the chapel. <laughs> the, the cathedral. Oh, that, that doesn't roll off the tongue. No, it does not. Um, <laughs> Walks into the chapel, grabs his skeletons by the skulls, and kind of pulls them backwards to him, 
forgive my minions. They are still learning the ways of being alive again. They've only been at this for 20 years now? Uh, so Wolfman, like, blinks really heavily to try and, like, clear some dust out of his eyes and then looks back down to his card. And he's like, um, hello, sir. Uh, would would you consider yourself to be a, a hierophant of sorts? Um, let, you know, that's a, that is a word that Daniel has heard a lot. Oh, 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 I've got this. I've got this. I've got this, Lord Imhotep. And one of your, <laughs> um, one of your two skeletal soldiers is jumping up and down excitedly with his hand up in the air. Uh, <laughs> yes, you are. You are a high priest of ancient times. Oh, good. This is preposterous. As my friend here has said, yes. Oh, okay, okay, good. And then uh, Wolfman turns back to the Phantom and he's like, then then you must be either the upside down hanged man or or perhaps the hermit? Hey, watch it. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Imhotep, go ahead and make an arcana roll on these cards. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. With a 22, you can hear a faint voice emanating from these cards, specifically from the Hierophant card. You hear the voice of Larry's patron muttering to herself in disappointment. Well, he's following directions, at least. Yeah, I see the little face of the Hierophant speak to me. Like, Shut up, Malivia. I'm trying my best. We'll try harder. He kind of straightens out a little bit. You want a warlock? Uh, I... Phew, I wouldn't know anything about that. I... I am just a man who was given some silly cards and asked to go find some people. Yes, that is who I am. Silly cards that speak to you and have asked you to do a task. Uh, just, uh, it is um, a woman asked me to uh, uh, run some errands for her since I I need to repay a debt to her. So that is why I'm here and why I am speaking to paper in my hands. Yes. Sorry, everyone in this room is hearing these cards talk. This is the most boring set of cards I've ever seen in my life. My, my cards aren't talking. That's that's preposterous. It's the um... roll deception. Oh damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I doubt Larry's very good at this. Ooh. Oh, uh, let's Poor Larry. see. Poor Larry. Oh, he actually has a plus two, but that would only that only brings me up to nine. At disadvantage. Oh crap. Ooh. So roll twice and take the ah, worst of the shoot. two rolls. Yeah, because I was going to say, wasn't Larry just talking to their cards like in front of everybody? Yeah, I, I was hoping they'd take it as just a frustrated muttering, but no, my roll is worse now. It is uh, a six instead of a nine. Uh, so with a six, you are not at all convincing <laughs> no, to I'm like... Imhotep or his soldiers. And now, Phantom, you are starting to suspect something's up. I am sweating. I am shaking. I've got a big old fake grin on my face going, no, everything's fine. This is normal. I'm doing normal things that people do, like being in a graveyard in the middle of the night, you know. I kind of approach the wolf man. I hold my hand out. I do not like to be lied to. Uh, may I see your cards? Yes, you may see my cards. I guarantee you, they if there's anything funky going on here, it's them. And I hand over my cards. Okay. So I now have the cards. And I'm kind of like examining them. Banning them out and looking. I'd say either roll investigation or arcana. Okay, so we'll do another arcana. 18. Holy cow, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the jig is up. I have no secrets. <laughs> Okay, with an 18, Imhotep, you hear the same frantic voice coming from this card saying, Lawrence, Lawrence, take this card back. Take the cards back. Do not let this one have them. I do not trust it. There is something very wrong with this individual. I'm just sitting there just grinning, teeth gritted. He just kind of stares at the Hierophant card as it mutters this, and he can very clearly hear it. Yeah. But no, they are the most plain cards I've ever seen. <laughs> Wolfman lets out uh, an audible Whew. Well thank goodness I do so hate to be left out <laughs> Back in the graveyard As all of this is going on A set of footsteps That are underneath A floating trench coat Gloves, bandages And top hat Make their way up towards The southern entrance 
of the graveyard. This is far below, um, with the chapel up top, there's the graveyard in the middle. Down below this, walking along this path, are a set of footsteps belonging to an invisible man. I wonder who that is. Grayson, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us what you're doing here. I've been doing some investigations. I've been hearing whispers of a hoard or a bunch of gold or something of value. And I'm here to essentially find an individual that I've heard that is going to be here on this night that essentially can either grant me access or has a key in particular for me to take all my winnings. Go ahead and make either an investigation or a perception roll. I would like to do an investigation. So that's going to be a 7 plus 6. That's going to be 13. So with a 13, you check your maps, you check your notes, and you're able to kind of see the identifying markers of the Church of St. Mary. And you know that this is where your mark is supposed to be. The man named Rainer Leroux. You are unable to tell exactly where he is, but you know that he is supposed to be here tonight. And as far as I can tell, I see nothing on the road in front of me, so I'm kind of guessing that the church or anywhere I'm supposed to meet someone is probably going to be further to the back of the cemetery. Is there a slight chance that maybe I see like a glow from a chapel or anything like that that I can kind of uh, head towards? You can kind of see the roof of the chapel peeking over the visible distance from you. The cemetery and graveyard, as you're looking at it, is covered in a dense fog that is really hard for you to see through. You can't tell if there's any specific figures in there. You do see the building and you do see that there is some light and there is some commotion. I want to try and slowly make my way into the cemetery and just kind of keep my ears open for anything that is going to possibly jump out at me or something. Go ahead and make a stealth roll. 16 plus 5, that's going to be 21. Oh, nice. So, with a 21, you, leaving very little trace of yourself, march your way into the cemetery. You're able to get about 30 feet inside before you start to see some shadows of several figures that are gathered around a collection of gravestones. Are they on the left or the right of me? They are on the right of me. I, I would like to dart to the left and try to hide behind anything that can possibly cover my entire body. With a 21 initial stealth, you can do that no problem. Okay, fantastic. You are pressed up against a large gravestone, and you can see about seven figures okay. and they are muttering to themselves a little bit and you're able to vaguely catch a few words a couple of them begin to mutter to themselves oh, we've been here for hours is this when is this going to what is this going to happen and you hear one particular voice at the head with a very unstable cadence silence and command their attention briefly i can sense that this will happen any moment now, everyone remain calm, remember your instructions, and stay put. Our visitors should be here shortly. His speech is interrupted by the sound of a pipe organ. <laughs> and he hushes everyone around him, and they all turn and look in that direction. As I see them all turning and all of their attention is being directed basically towards the pipe organ. Is there any way that I can identify Rainer or get closer to him in particular? Make another stealth roll. Okay. Oh, um, I'd like to go undetectable at this moment. Okay. So as you go undetectable, just to explain what that means, you are dropping all of your tools, all of your clothes, and anything that is covering you, so you are basically just a completely invisible silhouette. Oh my god, it's a 17, and if I remember correctly, undetectable adds a... I think it was like a plus 5, was it? I believe it makes your plus 5 a plus 8. Oh Ooh. my god. <laughs> so I am disappeared from existence. Yes! vanished <laughs> okay so with that you're able to basically press yourself up against the gravestone that they are all gathered around 
and you have not caught their attention. They are all still fixated on the northern chapel where the sound of that pipe organ was coming from. So you are pressed up against this gravestone and you can see, now that you are much, much closer, you can see that most of the people assembled here are various cult members. They all seem to be deferring to the one in the middle. This one is a figure that is short in stature, very thin, dressed in very fancy clothes that seem like they're trying a little bit too hard to put on airs of importance. And he is looking around with a very manic and deranged look, with buggy eyes that seem to be popping out of his head. And you can tell that that man is Rainer. Okay, and would you say that, like, I'm within arm's reach of him, or no? I would say that you are roughly ten feet away from him. Is the fog, like, so thick still that I can't make out his clothing, his belt line? Like, I'm looking I'm looking for, like, a key that would essentially get me into said horde I've heard all about. Make a perception roll. Okay, that's going to be 11 plus 3, so that's going to be a 14. Um, a 14 is high enough to succeed on that, Ooh. so you can see the very tip of a brass key that is sticking out from a pouch around his waist. I mean, at this moment, are they still focused on the pipe organ? Their focus kind of shifts back from the pipe organ yeah. to the grave in front of them, and Rainer says to a couple of his assorted cult members, Go and investigate. I believe that our friends have arrived. And two of them break away from the group and start to make their way north. He says to the others, Have you prepared what I've needed? The others begin to pull out different bags of materials, and it's a lot of uh, things that you can't quite identify as they start preparing for some kind of ceremony. As the two spies make their way up to the cathedral, they will roll stealth, and that is a 19. Ooh. Uh-oh. Sneaky. Do any of you have a passive perception that can beat 19? Probably not. No. <laughs> 12. Uh, 12 also for me. Okay. So you are too busy focusing on the commotion with Imhotep, his two soldiers, and Larry's cards to notice as these two cult members peek their heads in, identify the three of you, well, the five of you, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> He's got his mm -hmm. buddies. And then sneak their way back out. And I roll a straight d20 and see if my skeletons spotted them. Yes. They got a nine, so they did not. You know what I'm going to say? Because it's funny, <laughs> I will say that they did notice them. Wow. <laughs> They see what happens. They see the cultists peek their head in and identify and leave, and they attempt to get your attention, but you completely ignore them, Imhotep, as you are arguing with this tarot card. <laughs> wah, wah. They actually did something good. They are just no, minions. Your followers. Um, um, e excuse me, excuse me, Lord, Lord Imhotep. Um, I there's there's a thing I I think you you need to see, and um, I it, it, it oh, okay. Aww. Aww. Poor buddies. Gonna make me feel bad. <laughs> back in the cemetery, the two cultists make their way back to Rainer, and Invisible Man, you can overhear them, like, kind of whisper to him, uh, we, we've we identified five individuals uh, in there, and three of them are the ones you told us to look out for. Excellent. The others, I am certain, will not be far behind and go ahead and make a perception roll grayson uh i got a 16 plus 3 so 19 with a 19 you see some of the loose dirt around you beginning to vibrate a little bit to the rhythm of footsteps you see the ground start to shift and you can tell that it is coming from the south of you okay and shortly after you notice it, Rainer notices it. He immediately hushes and silences his cult members and says, Ah, there's another right there. Go deal with it. And he sends all six of them <gasps> down south. Hell yeah. 
They march right past you and head down towards the southern entrance of the cemetery. And the source of these footsteps is a mismatched pair of very large feet belonging to an eight-foot-tall, 400-pound monster. Frankenstein monster, what's going through your mind? I got a letter saying that my father, Victor Frankenstein, was going to be here. The last time we saw each other, I thought he was dead, but apparently he's not. My mission is to make sure his creations never see the light of day, and I am to be the only one. So I'm hunting down any of those who know him, who learned from him, and I'm going to make sure their scientific experiments do not create another abomination like myself. So as you make your way in, go ahead and roll Perception. Thirteen. With a thirteen, you can hear some commotion going on in the cemetery north of you. You can identify that there are several voices that are kind of hushed and secretive. You can't identify anything that they're saying, but you can tell that they are starting to get closer. I will take out the letter that I recognize as Victor Frankenstein's uh, penmanship, and I'll read it over once more just to make sure I'm at the right place. As you read through that letter, you can correctly identify a lot of the same landmarkings. This is the Church of St. Mary in Fairstead, England. So I look over at the church and I hear the voices like, hmm, either whomever this was addressed to is here or something else is going on. I walk towards the entrance. Go ahead and roll stealth and roll at a disadvantage. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, stealth is a minus one. Okay. Well, that was a seven. Minus one is a six. And that was a 17. So, yeah, six. With a six, as you make your way up towards the entrance, the ground kind of slopes uphill a little bit, and your head pops up over the hedges. You can't really see through the thick fog that's emanating from the cemetery, but you would be clearly visible to anyone on the inside, and you can hear several sets of footsteps approaching a lot more rapidly. Mm. I, uh, well... Here comes the welcome wagon. I'm going to try and look as not threatening as possible, but my club is very close to me and within easy reaching distance. All right, go ahead and roll either performance or deception. I'm just going to roll for deception. It's just a straight d20 roll for me. 11. With an 11, you do the best you can to appear non-threatening. And it's an uphill battle to do that. You start to see the glow of some torch lights coming from around the gate north of you as seven individuals march down before you. Oh, damn, that's a lot of people. They look at you and they kind of jump back a little bit in surprise. And you overhear a couple of them saying, uh, Oh, well, I believe this is a guy. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's. I think this is the one of the ones that Rainer wants us to to take care of. I, I don't know that seven of us are even enough. I, I, I think we can handle this. Handle me. Oh, I'm sorry, what was that? You think only seven of you small fry can handle me? Well, yeah, it's a numbers game. We got you kind of surrounded here. How about we skip the theatrics and I ask you something, you answer, and if I like your answer, I go with you peacefully, and if I don't, you leave me alone. I, I, I suppose we can... Spare a few minutes, and I'm, I'm kind of curious. What's your question, mate? Does the name Victor Frankenstein ring any bells with either of you or with this Rainer you speak of? Uh, I don't know that we should really say. I, uh, I, I, can, I can handle this. Um, yeah. What's it to you? I heard the name Victor Frankenstein. I'm looking for him. He sent a letter to someone to say that he was alive and to meet him here. I need to speak with him. Can, can I see that letter? Now I'm in a Mori Harris grit. Oh, yeah, I hand him the letter. All right, thanks. And then he attacks you. He swings at you with his torch as he takes the letter. Uh, that's a 19, so I'm assuming that hits. Well, yeah, my AC 17, so that hits. Okay, so that's going to do... Because it's fire, that's going to do 16 damage. Oh! Oh, that's going to hurt. I'm at like 19 hit points right now. Great. 
as he takes the letter away from you and kind of laughs at you recoiling from the fire, he says, Well, it looks like Rainer's letter found its mark. I, I go, huh? You son of a bitch! Hold that thought for just a second. Let's jump back to the Invisible Man. So, Invisible Man, you hear a scuffle and a skirmish break out. And you can tell that this is going to be going on for a little bit. And you've got a window of opportunity where it is just you and Rain. Absolutely. Right now. now, I think I had like a 21 on stealth uh, last time. I was curious if that carries over or do I have to roll for another stealth check to get closer and then attempt to pickpocket his key? I would say at this point, that would be another stealth check. Okay. Please be good. Please be good. Okay. So it's a 19. Okay, with a 19, you are able to get right up next to him and now roll sleight of hand to pickpocket him. Oh, God, moment of truth. Okay. Uh, um, so Actually, yes. do you want to make this more interesting? Absolutely. Oh. Okay, so I could have you roll a 20-sided dice and get just above a certain threshold rolling for sleight of hand. Right. Or... We can make this about precision rather than luck. What is your sleight of hand stat? Um, my sleight of hand is a plus five. So what I'm going to do, take your six-sided dice, your d6. Okay. You are going to roll that four times, and you are trying to land between 13 and 18. Okay. If you go under or over then you do not succeed on this sleight of hand check. That, okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So four times, and then I'll just tell you the number. Okay, so first roll is a six. Three. Three. Okay. And then a six. That is, I believe, exactly 18. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! So with exactly an 18, you are able to slip the key out of his pouch and slip something else in to take up its weight, doing the Ooh. Indiana Jones switcheroo. Yeah. What is the thing you're going to put in his pouch? I think, <laughs> I think the thing that I want to leave in, <laughs> mostly because I don't want this in my inventory, I'm going to leave my fake nose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna leave my fake nose that I've been palming, so that way everything and everything on me is invisible. So That's awesome. I'm leaving my fake nose, so that way whatever it is, and I've like got like a little bit of dirt like packed in there, so that way it like roughly weighs the same as the key. Yes. And then that way I could just like leave that in there, and then that way he has no idea what that is. But he has no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. He didn't know what hit him. Yes. <laughs> oh. So narratively oh. speaking, every single person roll two d four psychic damage. No. Oh no! 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 no. Two. Oh. You're really gonna Man, make me do this? I just thing? did something really cool. Oh no! Oh, we're not I even, even the area. there. We're not even there. You're dying. What? The you heck? said roll a d twenty, right? No. <laughs> uh, two mean, d4 oh two d4 damn yeah roll a d20 for damage <laughs> really like that roll sweet baby jesus two roll only the two i got yeah roll three I d100s know. of psychic damage oh my god <laughs> i like to imagine that's now your calling card for all your crimes is you just leave a little yes. prosthetic <laughs> nose um now that i've got the key my goal is to essentially get out of there like i don't want to be in this area anymore okay so now that you've gotten that key, make a stealth check at disadvantage. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I understand why. <laughs> uh, please be good. Okay, that was a 15 on the dice and the stealth again. So that's an unnatural 20. At disadvantage? Damn, okay. Well, with an unnatural 20, you are able to make your way past Rainer, and you make it just to the northern gate. Right. And before you make your way out that front gate, you hear the shaky voice of Rainer say, Mr. Griffin, leaving so soon? 
I pause and look back to see if he's looking in my direction. He is looking directly at you, prosthetic nose in hand. Ah! Shit. <laughs> he knows what you did. He does. <laughs> With that, uh, shit. All right, let's jump back to the Frankenstein monster again real quick. So, Ben, you've got the guy with the aggressively bad Cockney accent standing in front of you. What do you want to do? I take a swing at him with my club. All right, go ahead and roll to attack. That is a natural 19. That hits. Damage is 1d4. That's a 3 plus 3, so it's a 6. He stumbles backward into the group, and the other six kind of circle around him a little bit. I I think... We do need some reinforcements. All right, everyone. Enough time. Rain has been waiting long enough. Let's let's get him. And the other six are entered into combat. I take my club. I just jump into the fray. I'm just like, come on, then. So one of them who has pale, discolored skin, some long talons, some sharp teeth, and um, some red eyes lunges at you and makes a claw attack. And that's a 17. Yep, that hits. So with a 17, that does 11 damage. But because you have resistance to slashing, that's going to do 6 damage. Oh, I'm down to 13 hit points. Great. Then that one's going to retreat back around. Another cultist runs up from behind, and this one's completely unarmed, very, very scared, and runs up shakily going to throw a punch. And that's a (laughs) 2. You do not flinch. Run. So this one runs way far to the back, while the others kind of look back over their shoulders, shake their heads, and another vampiric-looking individual out of them makes a charge at you. This one's going to run up and try to bite at you. Ah. 14. Oh, 14 to hit. Uh, no, 17, so misses. Okay, so the toughness of the skin, the sutures, the... um the muscle patterns and everything, they're too thick for her teeth to bite into. And after making her attempt, she realizes she's left herself completely vulnerable. Cool. So I pull her off, and I just look at this uh, vampiric creature dead in the face, and it's like, oh, you should not have tried that. And I punch her in the face as hard as I can. Roll an unarmed strike with advantage. Yeah, my goal is to break her fangs. I'll say if you crit, you can break her fangs. Well, that was a two, but thank God with advantage, right? That was an eight. That, this dice is about to go to dice jail. As you send your fist towards her face, she evaporates into mist and re-solidifies just short of your hand. So she is now out of your grip and makes a run for it to join kind of the other cultist member who went up and attacked you and did nothing. Ah, you cheeky bitch. The main gruff one with the torch kind of puffs out his chest again and says, uh, All right, it's time for my revenge, you cheeky bastard. And he makes a lunge at you and swings with the lit torch. And that's a nat 20. Well, I'm fucked. (laughs) So um, that's going to be 17 damage. Yeah, I'm out. As you reel back from the flames, your vision begins to fade and you collapse onto the floor. And the last thing you see before you lose consciousness is the seven of them gathering around you and grabbing onto your legs to begin to drag you away. As I see this, I'm like, you will not survive this. And I pass out. All right, back to the invisible man. Um, You are staring down Raynor, who can definitely see you. What do you want to do? I think with that, all I'm going to try and do is, like, roughly how big is the key? The key is, um, (sighs) key-sized. It's basically (laughs) a, um, it's probably, like, it would take your entire hand to hold the key. It's one of those, like, big old brass with a big old ring in the back and, like, big pointy teeth out the front. Um, it's It's a pretty big key. Okay, um, mostly because I don't want him to get this key from me, because clearly he knows that I took it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to chuck the key and see if I can follow it with my eyes. Okay, 
I'm going to roll a d4. One is north, two is south, three is east, four is west. Three, so you chuck it east. Okay, can I roll investigation to see where it's going to land? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, roll investigation to see how well you can keep your eye on it. Okay, oh god. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I'm going to roll a d100 to see how far it goes. Okay, so investigation is a plus six, and I rolled an 18. Hey. And you send it 65 feet oh, shit. to the east. Okay, so now I have a rough idea about where it is. So after that, I'm literally just going to talk to Rainer because he clearly sees me. And I'm just going to say, well, you know, uh, I figured that there was plenty of players here at this party. I didn't figure you needed little old me oh mr griffin you are so much more important than you realize and he pulls from a pocket deep within his cloak this is a pretty impossibly deep pocket so it's it's mary pop and physics going on with this Uh, (laughs) pocket of holding he pulls out of his cloak pocket of holding (laughs) a massive brain in a jar um I need every single person to roll a d20 to see if you remain conscious as this brain lets out a massive blast of psychic energy. Is this a wisdom save or just a flat d20? This will be an intelligence saving throw. Intelligence saving. I got a 16. 15. A wolfman rolled an 18? Phantom rolled a six. Um, Invisible Man rolled a modified 18. Because you said it was intelligence, right? Yeah, intelligence saving throw. Oh, saving throw. throw. Uh, Ooh, okay. So that's an unnatural 20 then. (gasps) Okay. Interesting. So what what happens? (laughs) So, So everyone except Invisible Man is knocked unconscious. As soon as I see the brain, my mind is racing to like, okay, what is, what is that thing? I don't get it. Like the brain itself, does it have like eyeballs or what is it? What it is basically, it's a little jar filled with liquid. And this is a massive brain that is floating in this jar. It's slightly bigger than the average head size. And this brain has kind of a glowing set of eyes on its front and... (laughs) It's got a spinal cord out the back and like the spinal cord and brainstem. Okay, so as soon as this is pulled out, almost seconds before the brain blast goes out, Invisible Man's brain is just racing with possibilities as to like, where did this come from? What is it? Like, I'm almost inching slightly closer because now my curiosity has been peaked. You are paralyzed, but conscious. Your body seizes up and you lose control of it you kind of exert one last little push and make yourself fall over onto your back instead of your face. And the psychic blast continues on inside the cathedral. I'm just going to keep using those two words interchangeably at this point. Cathedral, chapel. Cathedral mini. I still like the chapel. Inside the building, Imhotep, Wolfman, Phantom, I will give you each a couple of seconds to describe what you do as you see the psychic blast heading towards you and get knocked unconscious. I try to brace myself against the organ, but when the blast hits me, I collapse onto the organ, hitting all the keys. Oh, no. (laughs) So, I will resolve this last. (laughs) Since I rolled an 18 for my saving throw, I was going to ask that maybe I'm able to, like, steady myself, kind of resist the blast a little bit, hit the ground, but as soon as Phantom slams on the organ, that noise overwhelms the rest of my senses and just totally sensory overloads poor, poor Larry. Sure. Oh, he's such a soft boy. He's so soft. (laughs) Is there a sound to this? Like, is there like a big sound that happens before the blast hits us? You can sense it coming. You can feel a slight disturbance in the air molecules. And what you hear is not a sound, but rather the absence of any distinguishable noise. Okay. So this kind of plays out in slow motion in Hotep's eyes. He kind of looks, sees the blast is making its way, turns to his minions 
and just glares at them, just like a look that says, I blame you for this. Because he gets hit. <laughs> I knew I should have kept better track of that gunpowder. <laughs> and um, the two of them just collapse into a pile of bones. Has it been 10 minutes since we started our conversation in the chapel? Uh, it has not. Then I am still Pierce the Veil, so I will not fall apart because I still look like a human. Okay. So, still looking like a human, you still maintain that form and that semblance. Mm. As you hit the ground and go unconscious and the lights kind of dim over your eyes, the ethereal lights behind your pierced veil, mm -hmm. um, you slip back to the other side. And so you once again return to the assemblage of your skeletal self. Okay. And the glowing runes that cover your body begin to flicker. Hey. And as the phantom lands on the pipe organ, the blast knocks him back off the pipe organ. I'm going to roll a d4 to see what direction you go flying in. <laughs> That's a two, so you go flying south. And Wee. I'm going to roll... A D100. Ooh. Oh my god. <laughs> to oh see god. how far you go flying. Oh no. <laughs> so, how far is 80 feet? Oh god. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> how much is damage that? is that gonna is be? Is he a ragdoll? So you go flying out oh, the front oh, door. Geez. <laughs> His cape flutters in the wind as he's blasted out the building. <laughs> okay, so, slight amendment to everything that's happened. <laughs> Imhotep falls to the floor, he returns to his skeletal visage and begins to flicker a little bit. Wolfman steadies himself and just barely maintains composure and some semblance. And then Phantom's body flies right into him. <laughs> Knocks him to the ground, stone cold unconscious. Body keeps going, bowls over into Ozim and Ur, and they collapse into piles of bones. He's a human bowling ball. <laughs> and then he tumbles out the front door. <laughs> he came out like a wrecking ball. That's what he did. <laughs> oh my oh. god. Wow. That phantom can fly. This man's made of paper. One of my better exits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's gotta make it a show. Now that everyone except the invisible man is unconscious and seeing that clatter and commotion... Rainer sends his cultists back up into the cathedral and they drag down the unconscious bodies of the very badly oh, beaten man. up phantom. <laughs> the skeleton of um, eh, all three skeletons and the wolfman. And they drag and kind of compile everyone together within a close range in this cemetery. Once everyone is all together, he goes person by person and takes from each of you First, looking you, Invisible Man, directly in your eyes, you see the extremely unsettling and disturbed gaze of Raynor smile down uh -huh. at you as he slices off a small bit of skin from your neck, pulls out a vial, and plops it in. I can't talk, can I? I'll say make a constitution Ooh. roll. If you can roll above an 18... Then you can talk to him. Constitu oh, son of a... I got a 15 within minus one, so it's 14. Oof. What is it that you would have said I would him? have done something to where it's kind of like, what are you doing? What do you need with that? And then essentially, like, I'm just kind of curious about what he needs that for. What is he doing? What's his plan? He takes the skin sample from you, and as you think that really hard, <laughs> he says to you... I have my own purposes. You'll find out eventually. Wait, can he read my thoughts? You did not roll high enough oh, okay. to know for sure. If this guy is going to do experimentation, like, I almost want to be a part of it. What I'll say, he takes your skin, he says that, and as your mind races, he smirks. And okay. then moves on. He takes from the wolfman a saliva sample, pockets it, then moves on to Imhotep, and pries from within his clutches the one magical scroll that he had possession oh. of. The scroll of talk. <gasps> no! And the runes on Imhotep's 
corpse begin flickering faster and faster. Oh, don't do that to me. And start <laughs> to dim. <gasps> the false life that is in Ozim and Ur also begins to drain out of them. But the light on Imhotep does not go out. Okay. Can I see all this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is there any way that I can move like my finger to like make a note of everything that's being taken from people? Just I'm literally just writing in the dirt. Make a constitution roll. Uh, 17 with a negative one. Because I'm just trying to move my finger and that's it. I'll say you can make about five okay. letters. So for me, it's going to be B for blood and then um, B for book. Uh, you mean S oh, for yeah. skin. So S for skin, B for book. And it's like, I'm trying to do small movements so that way I can kind of conserve a little bit of energy because of, like everything else is paralyzed on me. And I'm just trying to notate everything that I can kind of see. Yes. He then goes to the Frankenstein monster and takes from out of his pockets the journal of Victor Frankenstein. Can I roll to try and wake up or am I like out, out for good? Go ahead and make a constitution roll. Fuck yeah, plus five constitution roll. All right, die, don't screw me over. Six, plus five, 11. With an 11, I would say that, yeah, I'll say you're conscious, but you can't do anything. Damn it. But you do start to come to. Do I see him take the book away? You wake up as the book leaves your pocket. All right, I'm going to try mutters like, you put that back where you found it, or else you will die a horrible, painful death like those around you right now. He grins an impossibly wide grin and Ew. says, too late. He takes all of your stuff and gathers around where he and his cult members had begun to set up candles, incense. They'd begun to set up basically a whole bunch of culty witchy shit. <laughs> Old witch and shit. I like that. He lights the candles. He takes out both the scroll of Toth and the scroll of Anubis and joins them together and reads off this scroll. There is a spell that is hidden within them and he takes components of both scrolls and begins to read the words aloud. The ground violently shakes beneath everyone. And one by one, you are slowly awoken by the trembling, still unable to move, and Egyptian hieroglyphs explode from off of this page. They bury themselves deep within this grave, and the grave itself, the casket, bursts open. The ground and rubble fly everywhere, and from the casket, ashes begin to rise up. The words circle around the ashes, and the ashes begin to flicker with a little bit of false life. They swirl around each other and form the vague shape of a human body. They pulse and flash with a little bit of ethereal light, and they take the form of a skeleton, a muscle system, a nervous system. This is all the Dr. Manhattan stuff from, um, <laughs> from oh, Watchmen. Yes. Just individually piecing and flashing themselves together before they slowly wrap themselves up into a vampiric body and clothes. Oh, good. That's the most important part. <laughs> Don't want any nudiness in my good Christian horror campaign. Which then drop down in front of the gravestone labeled Countess Milarka Karnstein. Janae, go ahead and tell us what's going through Carmilla's brain right now as she has been brought back to life. So the first thing that Carmilla realizes is that there's someone there in her mind and it's herself thinking about herself. And she realizes that she hasn't had perspective in a long time. And that's quite frightening. Interesting. And Rainer says, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> this was... This was a near success. A spawn. That's no. 
She should be whole. She should be complete. But, but, this is rather convenient. And in one quick fluid movement, he is suddenly right behind you, Carmilla. And he takes from you your blood. Right. I think Carmilla is still being like, what is being alive? (laughs) (laughs) You know, I think there is some um, existential crises that she's trying to solve right now. And she does feel the pain. It's just like, oh, that's pain. And ow. (laughs) As she sort of has this existential crisis and as she reels from all of these new discoveries... Rainer takes a momentary step back directly into the pathway of four arrows that fly from out of the western hedges. Jumping out of the bushes, pops out three priests, one of them at the lead who is armed to the teeth. And Rainer looks him in the eye and says, No, not you. Not now. And the leader at the head of this group of priests fans out the other two to guard the north and south exits to this cemetery. And he fires off four arrows at you, Carmilla. Go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. When oh. Rainer turns and he yells out, not you, is there any way that I can try and make another save to where it's like I'm trying to move my body now? Because his focus is on a possible enemy now. And this is almost like a perfect chance for me to either get out of there or do something. You have enough control of yourself that you can crane your head around and you can look and see and try okay, to identify okay. this figure. So what was your dexterity save, Carmilla? Oh, that's a that's a two. This is really sad. Oh, no. So a two plus. <laughs> two plus two is four. Mm-hmm. Carmilla can hey. do math, guys. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, He's an independent that. woman. Uh, invisible man, what was your perception? Or, no, oh, let's do history. Okay. Ooh. I got an 18 on the die, but history, oh, history. Oh, that's a plus two. So I got an unnatural 20. Sweet. You immediately recognize this figure as a pretty famous traveling lecturer that goes from university to university to speak on matters of biology, natural philosophy. Would this be someone that I've talked to about? The biology of like other animals with like the camouflage and the perception of light and darkness and stuff like that. Uh, With your unnatural 20, yes, (laughs) this is somebody that you have worked with before. You immediately recognize Professor Abraham Van Helsing. Oh, shit. Who has just fired off four arrows into Carmilla, who could not save for them. Whoa. whoa. Oh, no. It's a famous vampire hunter. Okay. So, lesson in pain. Great. Know what that is. Uh, I think next she would probably be pretty pissed off. <laughs> so, you first take nine damage. Okay. Very good. I love being alive. This is, this is like such a metaphor. There's no way that I can attempt to help the person that I know, right? Go ahead and make a constitution roll. Oh, so it's a four. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Professor Van Helsing jumps out of the bushes, having shot at both of you, and then makes a dash forward. The three of you are now in combat. Professor Abraham Van Helsing, Rainer, and Carmilla. Okay. I will have Professor Van Helsing go first. He is going to take out an etched carving from a holy knife. He's not going to take out the carving. He's going to take out a holy knife with carvings etched into them. I'm not going to pop those out real quick. He's going to drive it into his own shoulder, and the blood that comes out of it spirals out of his shoulder and around Rainer as he invokes the blood curse of binding. Oh, snap. That's metal. (laughs) So Rainer is going to attempt to make a strength saving throw, and with a nine, he does not quite make it, and so he is bound in place by these ribbons of blood. And he then turns his attention to you, Carmilla. And that ends his turn. So I think Carmilla is going to start remembering thirst. Yeah, bite's gonna start happening. This is going to be something completely beyond her. This is something that compels her deeply. 
she is not a vegan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to roll. Dang, that's a three. I'm going to put my dice in jail in a minute. Your feet and your muscles are still not quite accustomed to moving about again. And right. as you stumble your way towards him, it's very graceless and inelegant. Mm. Yeah. And he steps aside as you miss. I would like to, just being so near something so graceless, make like a disgusted noise. Introduction is everything, darling. <laughs> Then it will go over to Rainer, who is going to struggle and attempt to break free. And with a 10, he is still oh, one below God. the threshold, so he struggles, but he is still restrained in place. And he will side-eye the brain in Jar, which has fallen out of his hands and is sitting on the floor. When would you say that Jack is able to jump in for Van Helsing? It's literally just someone that he knew just sent blood streams at another person to wrap them up and my whole life has been all about the sciences and facts uh go ahead and make just a straight d20 roll wow uh it's a four <laughs> yeah Ooh. uh not yet so then it's gonna go back over to van helsing who focuses draws on some of his inner pain and turmoil and the wound in his shoulder gets bigger Ooh. Oh. And the skin starts to sizzle away around it as the blade that he is holding ignites in a fiery blaze. Damn. He then is going to lunge at Rainer and attack. And uh, with a two, <laughs> Rainer breaks free of the binds just in time. He sidesteps and makes a mad dash for the brain in Jar. So then it's going to go over to Carmilla. Who is absolutely not having a good day, by the way, in case anyone wanted to ask. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> first day of the rest of my afterlife. And this is how we start. So I'm rolling again. Carmilla's got to bite somebody. And is that who I think it is right next to me? No! <laughs> <laughs> I will, like, if you're having a really bad day, I'll know. Oh my gosh, get ready for a bad time then. <laughs> it's just going to be all <laughs> nerves and jitters. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, yeah. You're going to be like four coffees deep <laughs> every day. Because Wolfman is downed, you don't have to roll for it. Oh, okay, for sure. I rolled a 17. Oh yeah, that for sure would hit. Oh, well, cool. So oh, that yeah. definitely hits. Um so that deals um, 1d6 plus 1 damage. I'm really sorry, honey. d6 plus 1. Okay. Oh, that's a 1. Oh, so that deals 2 damage. All right. And then you regain a d4 plus 1 of health. Okay. Is my blood funky at all? It is. Cool. It's basically the equivalent of... What dog? Uh, the difference between water and coconut water is the difference between regular blood and your oh. blood. <laughs> it does nothing to affect how blood works. Okay. Um, it My just... blood's just gross. So does that mean, uh, since I'm made of a bunch of different people, does my blood taste like jungle juice? <laughs> yes. uh, you have dead man's blood. That does have a different effect. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so go ahead and roll a d4 plus one. Okay, that is a two. So you regain two health. Great. Do I still have arrows stuck in me, by the way? You do. Can I pull those out? Not yet. Okay. Ugh. Uh, so then, going over to Rainer, he scrambles to grab the brain. And with an 18, he succeeds. He picks up the brain in jar. The eyes begin to glow again. And it launches another psychic blast. <laughs> that is entirely localized on Professor Abraham Van Helsing. And he rolled an unnatural 20. Wait, the brain did? Uh, Van Helsing did. Oh, thank God. Okay. So he is down, but he's still conscious. Now that he is down and paralyzed, Rainer grabs the flaming blade from his hand, tanking through the pain of the fire that engulfs his own hand, turns it around and drives it through Van Helsing's heart. He is in death saves. 
So Raynor retreats from combat with the brain, and Van Helsing, on his death save bed, tells Raynor and makes a warning, There are others that are coming. You are surrounded. You are not getting out of this alive. And on all sides, dozens and dozens of priests emerge from the bushes. Raynor looks around in a bit of a panic. He sends all of his cultists to basically keep them at bay. He thinks to himself for a moment and then says, Neither will any of you. And he takes the two scrolls of Toth and Anubis, hands them to the brain, who amplifies their effects. And he scattershots the magic all throughout the cemetery. And the ground beneath you violently shakes. Oh no. As caskets begin all at once, erupting from the ground, like the ending scene of Poltergeist, like the skeletons popping out of the pool. Uh... They just dive out of their graves, leaping up into the sky, and the whole cemetery begins to be flooded with undead under Rainer's control. With it, the collapsed skeletons of Ozim and Ur, uh, Imhotep's soldiers, also assemble themselves again and spring to life. Imhotep, you assemble again and spring to life. Make a charisma saving throw. Oh, God. (laughs) Nine. With a nine, you feel yourself, against your will, being pulled in Rainer's direction. And your runes flicker red and blue back and forth. You slowly start to march towards him, but you are moving far slower than any of the other undead. You are able to resist just ever so slightly more. And everyone else, go ahead and make a constitution roll. You will all get back up on your feet. Your roll will determine basically how ready you are to do anything from here. Okay. That's a four for Wolfman. I got a nine. Fourteen. I got a five. And that's unnatural because I rolled a two. Oh. This dice is going to dice jail. <laughs> Same Oh my god, I got a four. Enough! Yay! We're all in this together. Who rolled lower than a ten? Me. Oh, me. Same. Hey, me too. I think all of us did. I was 14. Yeah. I'm fine. So, Phantom, you're fine. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Everybody else, you are no longer paralyzed, but you are very unstable. What are the state of my clothes after flying through the uh, chapel? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> the cannonball through. I'm going to roll just a straight d20 to see. Oh, no. Oh, my God. It's a 17. Your clothes are really holding together. They're pretty dirty, but no rips, no tears. They're intact. Nice. Who made that? Um, that yeah. energy, that realization is why I'm, like, better off than everyone else. Yeah. It put me in a really good mood. <laughs> <laughs> Van Helsing. Oh, can can we talk right now? Yes. Okay. Abraham. What's going on? It's too hard to explain. I can I can buy you some time, but I'm afraid I'm I'm not very good for much else besides that right now. Uh what I can do is draw their attention. Men! And he calls out and still more priests, about an equal number of priests and undead are now filling and surrounding this cemetery. It's about a one-to-one ratio, nice. and they are all distracted by each other. And Rainer, in this commotion, takes his leave. He vanishes in a puff of smoke, and the brain falls down to the ground. Oh. It sits there for a second, looks to the left, looks to the right, and then a cultist runs up, picks it up, and yeah. runs away. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Do I see Rainer run away? You see him vanish. All right, so uh, the reason why I ask is because I want to see Rainer vanish. I want to Yabello no as loud as I could. And if it was possible, I want to try and roll to see if I can get up. But as I got up, take a swing at the nearest enemy. Uh, Go ahead and I'll have you roll strength for that. Ooh, okay, strength. Let's a rock roll. Okay, don't fuck me over, day 20. 17 plus 3, natural, unnatural 20. Nice. With an unnatural 20, you get up to your feet, and you bellow. May I? Go for it. May I? Do it. No! 
<laughs> so far, the mic cut out. <laughs> Your booming voice knocks over Imhotep. Oh. Who falls to the ground and begins to pulse back and forth between red and blue a little bit faster. Go ahead and make another charisma save. Oh god, he's going purple. <laughs> Uh, it's a five. A five? A five. With a five, it solidifies on red a no. little bit more. Oh, no. Oh, shit. I'm already out of the game, guys. Bye. Oh, no. You climb back to your feet, and you are still very slowly dragging yourself towards the outskirts. You're still resisting. There's still some part of you that is holding on but you are starting to turn more and more under the sway of these scrolls. Can Wolfman make an observation? Wolfman, make an observation. So as I'm coming to, and I see the visage of Emotep, who I had previously known with skin and human features, covered in this red glow, I think to myself, oh God, they killed him. And now they're puppeting <laughs> him around. <laughs> What, what have I found myself in? He's, I need him. So I, I, I need to try and get up and save him somehow. What I want you to do first is make either an arcana or a perception check. Okay, let me check. Arcana's plus two and perception's plus two. So either way, let's say arcana because that's a little bit more fun. 17. The voice of Maleva whispers to you from your tarot cards. Stop him, Lawrence. If you can interrupt what is happening, you might be able to get him back. And you need him, you idiot! <gasps> I'm on it, I'm on it! Uh, and I try and think of something to do. Um, I'm like, if I can... Can I roll another, like, Arcana or something to try and come up with a way to stop him? Because my, my initial thought is, let me tackle Mr. Skelleboy to the ground. Uh, roll Arcana. 19! Hey. 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 I'm gonna save you, Emotep. Just you wait. There is a War of the Wills going on inside of him, and it is magically based and can be magically disrupted oh. from an outside source. Help me. Um, I have a protection from good and evil spell. Uh, what does that do? Protected against certain types of creatures, aberrations, celestials, elemental, fey, fiends, and undead. The target can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. If the target is already charmed or frightened or possessed by such creatures, the target has advantage on any new saving throws against the relevant effect. Uh, yeah, I would say that works. All right. So I, I get up I, with my shaky, shaky hands. I grab Emotep and I, I will the protection of evil and good into him to try and... Lend him some arcana assistance to break this this power over him. Imhotep, make a charisma save with advantage. Come on, buddy. You could do it. BT Dub, whatever skeleton was right next to me, it, I hope it just turned into another pile of bones because I smashed it with my club. <laughs> uh, yep, it's now a pile of bones. Cool. You are still surrounded by both priests and by undead. So you could really just run five feet in any direction and bump into a new buddy to smash. <laughs> <laughs> My roll was 12. With the advantage? 12 with advantage? With advantage. Without advantage was eight. Shoot. I mean, 12 isn't the worst. <laughs> okay, so with a 12, I would say that gets you about 50-50. You stop yeah. in your tracks. Every second, pulsing blue, red. Mm. Yeah. Blue, yeah. Red. Yeah. And I'm still holding on to him. I'm yeah. trying to keep him in place. What's with the walking strobe? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so with all this, can I kind of like stumbly head on over to Abraham to find out any other information? Yes, we'll jump yeah. back to that thing. I just wanted to ask like what's going on because now I'm seeing like a guy disappearing, a brain in a jar. I see this random person shooting magic we've got a walking skeleton that's blinking because like i said like my character does <laughs> not know anything about magic it's always been like thievery pickpocketing sciences what specifically is your question um how is this person able to come back to life who was rainer what is rainer it's it, it's a little complicated um what's what's important right now is that as many of you as possible get out of here alive 
I want to try to minimize the amount of casualties. Um, to, to that end, um, I, I'm really in bad shape. Can Tell me how I can help. Okay, can you just pull me back up to my feet? Okay, so no one can see me, but I'm essentially kind of like guiding him to like have his arm around my neck. So that way I'm kind of like holding him up, you know, buddy status. Gotcha, <laughs> yeah. So he looks around and like assesses the situation, sees the state that everything's in, sees the Wolfman and Imhotep wrestling for control, sees the Frankenstein monster just going at it with all of these skeletons, sees the phantom- Press the digitating my clothes clean. <laughs> Describe to me the prestidigitation spell. This spell is a minor magical trick. Uh, you can create various magical effects, but in this case, instantly cleaning an object no larger than one cubic foot. I'm going to use it several times to clean my clothes a foot at a time. A walking laundry mat. Carmilla, what's going through your head right now? Probably want to get the things out of her stomach out of her stomach. The arrows, right? Yes. So you can go ahead and take those out then. Okay, so I take them out. And then Helsing watches you do this. Yes, and I, like, see who's done this to me, and I know that it's him. It's like this this inkling of, like, I've seen your face before. You're definitely getting some familiar flashes, like, as you look at him. You feel sort of in your soul, almost like history is repeating itself. Yes. There is something, like, deja vu about this whole moment. What Van Helsing sees as you pull the arrows out of your stomach is that the wounds do not immediately heal and reform. Oh. And he ponders, you're a spawn. Rainer wasn't completely successful then. Spawn? What is a spawn? It means there's still hope. And Van Helsing takes the blade that's in his heart and drives it further in. What are you doing? He falls to his feet and screams in agony as ribbons and ribbons of blood-like energy shoot out of him and circle around Carmilla. They lift her up into the air and she is filled with energy as the blood basically crawls up through her eyes. This is like going to the spa for a vampire, okay? Jack only knows Abraham here. And now that he saw his buddy not friend really more like a colleague but like stab himself and it's literally the only ally possibly the only person that could help him and he doesn't know what is happening so he's assuming that the undead vampire is killing his friend so now there's just like a whole flash of like anger right now and van helsing says to you in really pained gasps stay don't don't go what is she doing She's living. And Carmilla, you feel a weight dragging you back down. You hit the floor and you feel yourself racked with guilt and with anxiety oh. Oh. and with the weight of everything that you've done in your Can unlife. I look for anything that's on Abraham's belt like a weapon? Uh, yes, go ahead and roll investigation. Okay. So while he's doing that, just for flavor text, while I'm whacking away at skeletons, I turn around, I see Carmilla floating in blood, and I just think to myself, that's something you don't see every day, and I continue whacking at skeletons. <laughs> so I got a 16. With a 16, um, you find some holy water. Okay, so I'm going to ask Abraham, what do I do with this? Should I should I chuck it at the creature? It's It, it looks like it's some sort of, some sort of, I don't know, weapon. Hang on to it. And Carmilla, from that pain and torment, you feel some power begin to rise inside of you as you've been marked with the hunter's bane. And Van Helsing explains to the invisible man, she has a soul now. The price is steep. Odds are not looking good. I probably won't pull through from this, but there is a chance now. For her to be redeemed. Damn, if only there was a cleric nearby. Oh. Yeah. Could have could have helped Mr. Van Helsing, but oh no. <laughs> Bring me a little bit closer to her. Fine. So I'm just going to hobble both of us over towards Carmilla. Van Helsing looks Carmilla in the eye. Okay. And he tells you, you have a second chance now. 
Mm-hmm. I have bestowed upon you a soul. Don't squander it. And you may still be able to be redeemed. And he collapses. Oh my god. I'm, I'm essentially like trying to hold him up, but he's still got the blade in his heart, right? He still has the blade in his heart. And it's on fire, so it's cauterizing the wound around Okay, him. but I mean, with the little bit of biology that I know, it'll do more damage if we pull the blade out. Is there any progress with Emotep? Yes. Um, what I'll do is have you make another charisma save. With advantage. With advantage. Good. It's an eight. Wolfman, if you want to do anything to maybe magically shock his system. Yeah, can I just like slide my hands together like defibrillator paddles and just try, I don't know, blasting them <laughs> eldritchly? <laughs> Go ahead and roll an eldritch blast. All right. Just to try and wake him up. And this is charisma based magic. So maybe that'll put some charisma into him. Um, that is a 10 plus 4, 14? I'm going to say with a 14, what is your armor class, Imhotep? My armor class is 13. Oh. 13. So with a 14, you are able to get the blast in. So you will take some damage, but it kind of short circuits what's going on with your runes. Make one more charisma save. Advantage or not? With advantage. Oh, thank goodness. Jeez. Daniel. <laughs> 12. And that's with advantage? Yes. The other one was four. Damn, your dice don't like you. Dice jail. Throw him a dice jail. With a 12, you have about 75, 25. So this will be a lingering problem. Uh Uh-oh. Until you can more fully overcome this. But you have enough control to be able to force yourself top half is facing one way bottom half is running the other <laughs> exactly okay uh the fire that the blade is on is it a particularly special kind of fire <laughs> why don't you roll arcana uh well my natural's a two so it probably doesn't matter who can say it's hot and it's orange it's burning got it well i'm about to try something and hope i don't fall flat on my face i'm gonna walk over to where Carmilla and the Invisible Man are. I don't think I noticed the Invisible Man. You probably see, like, little floating things of, like, mud. Uh, So I'll ask her, what was with the wordy dead guy, and attempt to breast to digitate the fire out on the knife. Uh, Roll Arcana. Plus four, 16. 16, you snuff out the fire. Fantastic. I'd also like to rudely rip the knife out. <gasps> oh my Just God. put out the fire, no, rip the blade right. like, I'm going to grab his wrist and tell him, don't touch that unless you can help him. Uh, what do you do? I mean, I'm going to rip it out. It was a beautiful, beautiful etched blade. <laughs> Make an opposed strength check. So both of you roll strength. Nat 20. You did a nat 20? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, all right, P. Helsing. <laughs> blade pops out. Van Helsing is dead. Oh. <gasps> Moiterer. The wound that the blade was in starts to disintegrate. He basically liquefies oh my God. into just a pool of blood oh. that Disgusting. makes its way over to Carmilla, and she absorbs the entire thing. Oh. You're back to full health, Carmilla. Wild. Oh, very good. And you have the full capabilities of the Blood Hunter class. Excellent. So with all this, my friend is dead. I've got two things that I don't know what they are. I'm lost. Uh, I'm basically just going to get the fuck out of here. As the priests and the skeletons that are surrounding you are engaged in combat, they begin to push themselves further and further in. And most modes of entryway are blocked except for a mausoleum to your west. I grab my stuff and I go. Can I princess carry Emotep back to the group? Yes. Oh, All right, I swoop him up like a beautiful, elegant lady, and I carry him back, because a human <laughs> made of bones is probably as heavy as I can carry. Uh, he is 27 pounds, I believe. Sweet. Just within my strength range. <laughs> the top half turns back, looks up at the wolf man. His eyes do the, the same flickering the rest of his doing blue and red. He's like, I don't like this any better than you, friend, but... My cards say that I need you for something. And Frankenstein Monster, you are 
surrounded. Do I see... Okay, well, obviously I can't see Invisible Man, but do I see the mausoleum? Yes. If you look over your shoulder, you see the others making a dash for the mausoleum. All right, so I just have pure spite. I hit one more skeleton, and I book it. I look at the phantom. I grab him, and I throw him on my shoulder. I was like, let's go, pretty boy. You're important. Oh, my God. Oh, what a brute. (laughs) And I just run to the mausoleum. And I just, like, look at Carmilla, give her a look of understands, like, she must not be okay. Okay, but, like, does Frankenstein also have a soul? Oh, no, that's that's philosophy. We're go- we're probably going to discuss that later, but... <laughs> As you all run into the mausoleum and bar the door behind you, the cemetery continues to be overwhelmed with corpses and with priests, and way off in the distance, skeletal footsteps step over a brass key that gets pounded deeper and deeper into the dirt. Son of a bitch. We are the outcasts from the misfits, you might say. We deal with the nightmares that you run away from every single day. We know the world is a gruesome little place. But us outsiders, we've developed quite a taste for the grisly and morbid, the ghastly and the horrid. We know it's awful, dreadful, but we like it. Just another haunted night, shrouded with unearthly fright. So when you're oh so terrified, you know who to call. The world is falling apart, we'll never take it to heart. So monsters and creatures and spirits and specters and all, let's all have a ball.